here are a few nuggets of learning that I picked up that just provide a glimpse of the richness of today's discussion. Food production in the age of climate change faces the tensions of production produ producing food at scale and at the same time making sure the ecology supporting this production is sustainable. Sustainable and regenerative agriculture interests may compete, but the common interest of gaining deeper understanding of these issues exists. We need to include indigenous knowledge and the experiences of rural communities in these conversations. Natural science is obviously important in this context, but so are social sciences and the humanities that help to gain a broad understanding of many different perspectives. In our second panel we learned that 70% of our planet is covered by water, but only 2% of the global food supply comes from water. As we tap into this potential, we have to be aware of the climate change induced changes to the diversity of food the blue economy produces. What is sustainable today may not be sustainable tomorrow. Genomics has a role to play in the understanding of these changes and in adapting to them. In this context, we were also introduced to the concept of genomic justice. We learned to look at DNA as a toolkit versus a blueprint in our third panel and how we can learn from microbes that have forever adapted to changes in their environment. The example of Lanzatec illustrated how these genomic tools are used in bioprocesses that allow the reuse and replacement of waste stream CO2. This is not the future, but the present. This is further validated by the bioeconomic market growth projections that inform the BC government's bioeconomic strategy. In our final panel, we looked at climate change and its impacts on biodiversity, and these impacts are faster than ecosystems can adapt. Environmental DNA is a key tool that helps us to better understand these processes to the point that it enables public policy measures. Development of standards in Canada now allows the introduction of eDNA in the environmental regulatory realm. To understand the biodiversity of our planet in the first place, the Earth's Biogenome projects aim to understand, catalogue and conserve biodiversity using genomic sequencing. These technologies will not allow to de-extinct species, but may allow us to reintroduce traits of extinct species. Biodiversity is closely tied to indigenous communities and modern approaches need to be thoughtfully combined with deep indigenous knowledge. Climate change and its bio biodiversity consequences will be a driver of the biorevolution and as such on markets broadly. Truly an informative and diverse forum and a great launch pad for the genome calendar Genome Canada Challenge, as well as Genome BC's programs. In closing, I would like to thank all our speakers and panelists for their contributions to the 2022 Genomics Forum. Your depths of knowledge allowed us to engage on a variety of topics and innovative approaches. It is now up to all of us in this ecosystem to move these ideas forward to make impact. This climate change emergency leaves us no option. As one speaker suggested, we die or do. Kudos to our sector managers David Charret, Michel Cran and Raoul Singh for pulling together and moderating superb sessions well done. Thank you to Federica Di Palma for your moderation and leadership in pulling this entire forum together. Delivering a day like this takes many people in the background as well. Sally Greenwood, our VP Communications and Societal Engagement and her team, including Brad Lyle who acts as our executive producer, and Anna Sienega who together with Kimberly Gillette kept us all on track. The final thank goes to you, the audience, for your interest and participation. We hope we sparked ideas and created collaborations. Genome BC remains ready to work with all of you to make socioeconomic benefits a reality. Last message, please respond to the survey that will be arriving in your inbox shortly. Thank you again and have a great evening. Bye-bye.